Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another exciting Vobi One-Eyed Kenobi show me with me, Roger Bannister. Uh, no, wait a minute. I'm not running to get here on time. Uh, no, the four-minute mile. We've got the lovely Julia today on the 19th of April. Hello, Julia. Hello, lovely Richard. How the devil are you? It's still wondering whether that was a made-up name or whether that was Roger Bannister, yeah, he did the four-minute mile in the 1950s, I think. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, and welcome to another Monday edition of The Vogue Show. It's very nice to have your company here on a beautiful, well, it was a fantastic and lovely, beautiful day. day. Yes, day. sunshiny day. Yeah. Which was rather nice, wasn't it? It was gorgeous. It was a little bit chilly. Uh, yeah, it was a, a bit chilly. I was uh, in my Speedos on the beach, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, it cleared the beach and most people were cowering behind the um, bus shelter hmm. uh, until yeah, I went I told, in. I told, I told you you shouldn't wear the flesh-coloured ones. No, the flesh-coloured ones with the little picture of a Spanish poodle. <laughs> Not quite the thing you want, is it? <laughs> no, I, I can see why they, uh, you know, that cleared the beach. But, yeah, thanks. Anyway, um, <laughs> how are you, lovely Julia? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. It's, oh, fantastic. It's uh, odd to see the roads getting busier and busier. Oh, the almost roads. Almost back to before COVID, kind of, almost. Yeah. I, gosh. Was there um, a pandemic about us going around recently? I don't know. I've, I've heard that there was some, some sort of nonsense happening. But anyway, it's nice to be back to some sort of normality, although normality hasn't quite gone back. Uh, if you happen to be going into a pub in Bath, just be careful that you're not Keir Starmer because you may not be welcome. I guess most people probably have seen that little clip that's been going around. Um, absolutely brilliant to see the leader of the opposition thrown out of a British pub for not being the opposition of uh, the p Parliament. Sorry, just, my trousers have fallen down. <laughs> Here we are. It's much better. Anyway, uh, lovely Julia, I understand that there are people out there in the Vobosphere. There are. We have people in Zitrat. Put my teeth in. Let me throw the scrolly scrolly over to the you. Scrolly, there's scrolly. so many it's wires. And, yes, I know. Well, there's sorry, things wrapped studio around. Studio. There we are. I'm not, not that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm trying to uh, give you room so that you can scrolly and go back to and make the announcements or the roll call. There we go. There's a little bit more room. For hey, you. that's it. Mm. Is that all right? Yep, that's great. Marv. That's great. That great. is, isn't it? So have we got here then, love? We've got lovely Colonel Cragratty. Oh, lovely. I don't know what that accent is. I can't keep it up. No, no, good. Get rid of that. <laughs> lovely Judith. Mwah. Lovely Daniel Watkins, who is remembering a uh, um, a friend today. Oh, that's nice. oh 2010. I see. So uh, sending hugs to you, sir. Sending hugs. Um, Steve Baker. Oh, nice the lovely. Yeah, Steve Baker. He's still chowing through them. <laughs> Would you like a sweetie? No, thank you. No. <laughs> Just trying to get through them, you see. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've already gone through one bar of chocolate. Yes, I've, I've been sitting <laughs> in between waiting for the show. I'm going to be a big fat lardy cake. Anyway, never mind. Steve Baker, yes, nice to see him. The lovely Station Master's Choice. Ah, oh, good old Station Master. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. God, that echoed. Yeah, that did. Not echoed. Bit anyway, of feedback there. That's the one. Yeah. The lovely Alison O'Brien. Hello, Alison. Hello, everyone. She nice says. to see you. And the lovely Jared Mel Melrick, 
Yeah, yeah. nice. Me- Melick. Yeah, Merrick. Merrick. That's Merrick. it. Something like that, yeah. I hope. Yes. <laughs> the lovely Kate Evans. Ah. I have a lovely request. Well, lovely. I have a request from her there in a bit, is. but I'll uh, hold that back. Okay, don't forget it though, will you? I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> the lovely Zom Coco. Yes. Nice. The lovely Bonnie H. Ah. The lovely Sean Ford. Ah, the nice. lovely Jeffrey Harrison. Where's your Lord gone? Yeah, Lord Jeffrey Harrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the lovely. Oh, I need. Oh, Mark Donny McLeod. Oh, good old Mark Donny McLeod. The lovely Michael White. Yes. The lovely. Looking for a new name. Andrew Norris. Ah, hey, Andrew Norris. Yes, all the way from Croche. Croche. Sure. Yeah, Croche. well, uh, Croche, Croche. For, you know, if you're, if you're in sure. with the in crowd Please, and you know let's the not right say people. That if you're in with Croche, anyway, go on. Um, now you've put me off. Yes, the sir. lovely Justine Jones. Ah, good old Justine. The lovely Anna Jones. Calling them Justine Jones. You had some socks, didn't you? From I did. Thank you very much. Are you much. wearing them? No, I'm not actually, oh. but I, I, I am going to wear them. Oh yeah. They're unicorn socks. Unicorn socks. Socks with a horn. What? That's not what it says in. Sorry, Eric. You've been retyping my script again. The lovely Kerry Baldwin. Hello, Kerry. The lovely Ramibu too. Oh, Ramibu. The lovely Paul Cockerell. Hi, Paul Cockerell. The lovely Darren Howell. Oh, Darren, yes. The lovely Graham Ruffy. Mm hmm. The lovely Sean James Cameron. Sean James Cameron. The lovely Ron Langley. Ah, oh, yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Waiting. Waiting now. A whole minute. Tick, 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 tick. A whole minute. Tick, 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 Did Andrew Norris. Well, you did say Andrew Norris, I did. Uh, yes, because I made the joke about Croce. But I, I thought Croatia. it was Andrew Norris too on that one. Oh, well, he could have been switching accounts. Yes, maybe. he's probably switching accounts. Or maybe I was just seeing things. Maybe you've got two eyes. You see, if you've got one mm-hmm. eye, you can focus on one thing at one time. You've got to worry about two things at the same time. <laughs> That's how it works for me. We also have yes. the lovely Mike Stevens. Oh, good old Mike Stevens. The lovely Ed Loud. Ed, Ed, jolly old shush. Yep. <laughs> the lovely Audrey Forbes Hamilton. Hello, Audrey. The lovely... How's Inglenook? <laughs> the lovely Alan Sandell. Yeah, Alan Sandell, lovely. The lovely Dave Yvard. Mm, the good old Dave. The lovely Mark's beautiful landscape. Oh, it's Mousel, Richard. Mousel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit samey, isn't it? That joke. Very samey. <laughs> Ooh, the lovely Trev's Travels by Narrowboat. Oh, good old Trev. The lovely. Oh, it skipped there. Josephine Souter. Oh, Josephine Souter. The lovely Veg Grow podcast. Ah, oh, veggie. Hello, Richard Suggett. Ah, uh, Mr. Suggett. Nice Mr. to Suggett. see you, Mr. Suggett. Uh, we have the lovely Robert Carosa. Ah, oh, good old Robert up there in Cumberland. The loveliest of lovelies, Wise Owl. Oh, wise. Wise move. <laughs> oh, this is an interesting one. Yeah. The lovely Nicola Prime. Ah, oh, Nicola Prime. With all funny... And I'm new to it. this and just had to add to confusion the matter I'm Ra- I'm Rachel, not Nicola. My oh. daughter's YouTube account. Oh, I see. <laughs> Hello, <it>. Rachel. <laughs> Hello, Rachel. Marvellous. Oh, look, there's... There you go. Lord, Lord Jeffrey, Jeffrey Harrison. Harrison. There we Put are. the Changes. Lord back. Thank Put you. Put the Lord back. Thank you. We know where we are, you see, because then we can doff our, the forelock. How do you doff a forelock? Well, you've got to get hat, it on a kind canal, of... haven't you? And then you go through forelocks uh, and it's uh, all good. Oh. <laughs> so there we are. And yes, I think that's... That's more that's, or less it? That's all the people I can see. Fantastic. Now, um, I had a, a visitation today. Yes? I had a visitation for a lovely man called Paul Rampton. Oh, lovely. Good old Paul. Uh, you may remember he did a video about bell ringing some um, while ago. I think it was just before Christmas. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, about Christmas time. Um, and it was fantastic. And um, so he, he said, Richard, Richard, he said, because he used my name. That's the purpose of it, to be used. <laughs> and he said, Richard, I've got something for your stove. I said, oh, yeah. He says, you've got an Essie, haven't you? I said, oh, yes. How did you know? Nobody knows I've got an Essie. I keep that secret. He said, no, we know you've got an Essie. He says, I've got something for it. I said, oh, what have you got for my Essie? He said, I'll bring it round. And he brought it round. Of course, we stayed outside and did all the COVID rubbish. Yeah, likely. Anyway, here it is. And I said, I must show this on the show. It's um, it's a ladle. No, it's not a ladle. He, play- he played upon a ladle. It's a pot, but the thing about this pot is you can't quite see on this camera. But if we get, could you get the um, the little camera, the special, uh, the SE cam? It does say here. Look at that, yeah. specially made for the for SE the SE cooker. cooker, and that is so beautiful. And I will smoke this. 
<laughs> puff, puff, puff. <laughs> like the piece of pipe it is. This is a this is an old. It's two pints made by a company called Holcroft, Holcroft. I think. Yeah. Uh, two pints you can get in there, and I don't know what it was originally used for. Doing. But um, it goes on the essay. So I'm going to. Uh, obviously, you can't cook in it now because it's a little bit rusty on the inside. But it's a lovely ornamental piece to put on the on the SE, and it's part of the SE heritage. Listen to that. But one good thing is you can donk it onto the lovely Eric. Here, Eric, take this. Bye. Poor old Eric. I know, poor old Eric. And anyway, so thank you so much, Paul Rempton. That was so kind of you. Um, he also said, uh, "Do you and uh, the lovely Julia like um, chocolate?" Said. Julia hates chocolate. She doesn't like it, but I'll have it. Lies. And so he dropped round a clockwork orange and uh, a, 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 a Linda... Lind Lindor. Lindor mint fruit cake. Linda? Linda mint fru fruit it's cake? It's not fruit cake. What? No. Anyway, well, I don't know. No, I'm making it up. Yes, it's, it's irresistibly smooth milk Irresistibly. Chocolate. So thank you so much. That's so kind. People have been so nice. Nice. Yes, and very nice. Um, so that's, uh, that's Sean James Cameron yeah. says uh, pass it around the uh, the Essie pan yeah, pass it Essie around pan. like a church collection tray yes so uh, if you want to make your collection just throw your coppers in there thank you <laughs> which is absolutely lovely also um, I want to just thank um, Jackie and Miles uh, for dropping around some rather lovely curtains the other day uh, which is very nice for the new studio. We're not actually, you may not realise this, we're not actually in the new studio. <laughs> we're not? No, oh. no, this is still the cramped, I can't keep away from you studio. But when we're in the other studio, it will be megaphones going, Hello, Julia! Hello, Julia! Hello, Julia! Can you hear me, Julia? You're because you'll be on the other side. What'd you say, Richard? I said, Richard, What's Richard. on the agenda tonight? Night, night, night. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, anyway, um, and, and, and finally, I just also want to say a big, big thank you to the lovely Keith. He knows who he is, um, who watches uh, from a distance, from a distance. Let's not go into that routine. Um, and uh, he's very kindly coming to sort me a roof out for me. So thanks very much. The roof of my mouth. That, no, no, no. The roof of the house. So it's all it's all happening, ladies and gentlemen. So, have we got any uh, exciting uh, comments going on out there, lovely Julia? Um, uh, Kate Evans is asking when I'm going to say my message. Her oh, yes. message. Yes. When are you going to say our message? I can do it now. Yes. Let's get. Let's get. Hang on. Let's let's have the official. This is the message for Kate Evans' message coming. This is a special request from Kate Evans, a message to Mark Flinders, her partner. Ah. Uh. Um. She wants him to know that she loves him so very much and she's missing him incredibly. I miss so. him too, to be honest. <laughs> Mark Flinders. I, I love him as well. I shouldn't have said that publicly. <laughs> but I hope you get well soon, Kate, and uh, get home to spend time with him. Is she him. still in hospital? Yes, I believe so. Are you still in hospital, Kate? What is it? Have they sellotaped you to the bed? <laughs> That's outrageous. You should have a word. See if you can get... What is the stuff that can... Vaseline. That's what you want. Smear your body in Vaseline. And then when they try to put the old tape on, it won't work. It will not adhere. Even gaffer tape doesn't work on Vaseline. Try it. Report to us next time. <laughs> but uh, it's very nice. We're happy to send out those um, distress messages. I mean, those love messages. <laughs> Do you know, I used to, when I used to see uh, my old friend Harriet mm -hmm. in the old days, she used to listen to uh, Steve Wright on a Sunday morning. Yeah, radio S presenter. Radio right? presenter, Steve Wright on a Sunday morning. It was all Steve Wright's love songs. And it, it, what would happen is people would ring up and they would say, Oh, hello, um, could I have a message? This would they'd be semblance and you go... Steve Wright would be going, uh, th this is from Celia to John saying, uh, happy birthday for such and such. And it would tell him I love him and all the rest. It was, and we just used to say in unions and tell him yourself. Who rings a radio station and says, uh, could you tell my partner, lover, boss, uh, I mistress? I can understand when they're parted, you know. Like yes, when they're, they're parted. Such but as Kate it, and Yes, and yes, Mark. that's a different thing. Uh, of course it's a different thing because um, Kate's one of us. It's different when it's somebody else. Um, and um, but we used to think that you know they're probably sitting there together, and over the radio it says, "Oh, please tell my husband that I love him." And it's like, what? 
Can't you tell him yourself? You've got to ring in a radio station and waste the BBC's time, our licence payers' money, so that you tell one individual instead of the, and the whole audience are going, well, that wasn't addressed at me. Where do I... Where, where am I being... <laughs> Is this a five-minute or a ten-minute rant? This is a 15.2-minute rant, actually. All right, well, I'm going to go okay. make a cup of tea. No, 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 no. You stay where you are. We're going to open up a piece of the chocolate orange. Okay, dokie, but I have it on good authority yes. that today happens to be... Yes. ...the day of birth of... Christopher Columbus. The one, the one, the only... David the station Bellamy. master's choice, our Bernie. Is it Bernie's birth, Daddy? Happy birthday, Bernie. Oh, are you ready? One, two, three, four. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Diddy Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Pombly diddle. Happy birthday, dear Bernie. Happy birthday to you. Oh, I don't know, 97 today. That's outrageous, isn't it? You are outrageous. It is an outrage. God, imagine being that ancient. But he's a lovely man. He is a lovely man. And we have a video from Bernie. Hey, is that a cue? Is that a cue? That might be a cue to play is. the birthday boys video. Let's go in the video box and see if it's rattling about in there. You see that? Somebody's dropped a sock. <laughs> the things you find up here. Now, we're going to talk organic for a little bit because. As you can probably see, even if I can't because of the sun, we're walking up to an electric fence. Now, it isn't actually in operation at the moment, but they're obviously pre either preparing for it or just took it down. Um, New Forest ponies and Exmoor ponies have been bought over here to help keep the natural balance of things, grass, scrub, that kind of thing. And they also graze cows and sheep over here. You keep a balance without any insecticides. I'm just looking down here at some of these lovely, lovely buttercups. And there you see Beachy Head, South Downs Way and the seafront. And we're going to go a little bit this way. We have a totally different, totally different view here. A spawn pier. You certainly get a different viewpoint from this end. Lovely smells up here. The scent of foxes. Farmyard manure. Various wild plants. I wonder if that I wonder if that's elderberry. I think those are elderflowers. But aren't they lovely? Having to be a little bit careful here because in the morning dew the grass is slippery. 
I'm trying to keep the camera <laughs> steady but this ground is not at all stable so I'm going to go back up the pathway but again lots of these little holes where obviously the rabbits are, have been in and out over the years and you you can see here clearly this is quite a good example of coastal erosion you see this furrow goes along here and the cliffs are definitely sinking I'm a bit worried that uh, the cliff was going to come away then and that poor old Bernie was just suddenly going to disappear off the edge those cracks <laughs> coming down like that that was a, a bit of a worry Bernie but I'm glad you got up to the top we were we were discussing the plant that you were looking at that you thought were elderflower I don't think it was elderflower a it's too early and b it's um elderflower is much more lace like isn't it tinier little flowers mm. um but I think it was blackthorn Blackthorns very much out, and the leaves were out. I don't think it was elder. Yeah, going back to those cracks on top of the uh, the hill there. Yeah. <clears throat> or nearing the yeah. edge there. I don't know about rabbit rabbits, but it was definitely hairy. Definitely hairy. Is that a joke? It was a bad one. It was good. I like <laughs> it. Uh, Paul, um, we are scoffing in the studio tonight. Uh, the um, mm, what was dreaded it? yummy orange, the, the dreaded, chocolate orange. Yeah, the chocolate orange. Thank you so much. Uh, we just noticed your uh, comment up there. I hope you you saw it when we we showed you the the lovely piss pot that you gave me, which I shall have now by my bed. I can get two pints of that. I can fill it up the night quite mm. happily, like that. Oh, there we go. And and then any intruder. I can just flick it at them. It's a, such, and then if that doesn't work, I can bash them over the head with it. So um, that might um, get rid of the rust. That might get rid of the rust. Yes. Although someone did say. Yeah. What did I can't they remember say? Remember who? No, who? Someone in chat. Yeah. Someone in the chat. Mm, someone in chat. Yeah. Said. What? Boil up some milk in it. That should remove the rust. Boil up milk. Oh, mm. I might do that for my hot because I like a hot milk. Just before I go to bed, just I might some, boil up some hot milk yeah, but and then rust. rust in it. Oh yeah. Well, how would it that seems help? a bit of a waste of milk. Yes, how much milk? Cows work hard for that precious liquid. They do, <laughs> they do, oh, I think I might sneeze. Ha! Ah, chewy! Oh, God, this is not a wig. I'm glad this isn't live. Anyway. I'll tell you what, if this was a wig, I'd be very annoyed. A very yeah. terrible wig. Terrible wig. <laughs> terrible terrible wig. wig. Oh, my goodness. How did you get it? It's an ear <laughs> wig. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in today's show, we also have a couple of quizzes. Uh, we have a couple of quizzes and we have some pictures to show you. Pictures to We have show some you. nice pictures. pictures to oh, yeah. And do you know, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't managed to go into the art gallery for so long. So no, to, yeah. So we are going to go into the art gallery today and show you some nice pictures that uh, Ian Dance has uh, sent us. Lovely. So we do that by pulling the special lead here. Oh, do we both have to do it? Yes, we both have to do it. One, two, nine, go. <laughs> Marvellous. Well, that was isn't that nice? Nice to hear that tune again. Uh, I can name that tune in eight minutes. So um, Ian Dance has sent this. He says, Richard, I'm not sure if you've got time to show these on the Vogue show tonight. Have we got time? I think we've. Got, I think we've we'll make time. time. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. What, what ingredients do we need? Flour, eggs, cheese, <clears> and ham. Uh, and that's enough time for. I wish Stan. I knew how to make time. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, these pictures I took this evening while up in my local woods. I love the creativity that's gone into this. Not sure who done them. Not sure who done them. Uh, maybe a local woodland group. Enjoy. Is that the name of the local woodman, woodland group? Anyway, we've got these lovely pictures and we thought, you know, it's a bit arty. We thought we'd show it to you. Yeah, so a little look-ski. Uh, this is number uno. The flower pot men. The flower, look at that, climbing up the hill. I mean the tree. <laughs> Funny old hill. Yeah, with their lovely, oh, steady boys, steady, steady, stop, 
mucking about. I wonder how they've been attached to the trees. I hope they haven't been nailed. I hope they haven't been nailed. Look, they look like they've been nailed. They do a bit, don't they? Yeah, the swines have nailed them into the tree. (laughs) But it does look very nice, I have to say. They are fabulous to watch. Very, uh, it'd be interesting. Watch. What are they going to do? Do a little dance? They're not. uh... (laughs) Shimmy up the tree. But look at that. They've got movement in them, haven't they? They've got the impression of movement. Yes. Even though it's been captured. Um, And that one at the bottom does look like, oh, we've just been spotted we shouldn't be here quick scarpa scarpa and is another one he's left his ladder behind and there he is halfway up those nice trees with their little um socks on the green well that one looks like it's wearing stockings or a onesie uh, yes that's <laughs> true i don't know how high it goes but what a lovely a meter or two um yeah so where was that ian what, what woodland are we talking about that's what we'd like to know oh hang on we might as well listen to the whole thing. If you know the words, hum along. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, where was the woods? It's, he says, my local woods. You're up near Crawley, aren't you? Creepy Crawley. Is that in... Um, is it Worth Woods? Worth Woods? Is, it, is that the woods up there, Worth? I have no idea. Um, just trying to think where they would be. Um, anyway, it was definitely worth it showing us. It, lovely. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, how nice. Ed Loud says, ah, oh, that little gallery jingle gets better every time. It certainly does. We do have a shortened version. Andrew Norris sent me a shortened version, which I have as yet not put on the special magic machine because I'm saving all of that for when we go upstairs. And that sounds a bit dodgy, but um, the new studio will be upstairs, you understand. Yes. This is going to be the new jacuzzi, live jacuzzi, a new show coming to to only people who are in it. Anyway, um, <laughs> so that's that. Um, now, we have a, a, a spare moment in today's very busy schedule, 07934746790. If anyone would like to ring us up on the old telephone, you can use the candlestick phone, you can use a dial-up phone, you can use a trim phone, or you can use the new state-of-the-art digital, whatever you call it, smartphone. 07934746790. And Julia's going to sing the song. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. But here's our num, here's our number. So call us, maybe. How about that? And whilst that nice? we're waiting, Mark Donny McLeod says, "I know why that tree's green. You know, the one with the flagpole men climbing up it." Um, Bill and Ben flob a lot. Oh, they do. They do flob a lot. Has this just come in? It is may this... be smirk. I think I may have had a text just now. It says, "Is this Richard Vobes, the bald explorer?" I apologise if I got the wrong number. It is. But, <laughs> but well, I was trying to look at the picture. I'm sorry, I was trying to look at the picture. I can't ring back. I can't ring back. Oh, it's on WhatsApp. I can. Oh, hello. It's ringing. It's ringing. Oh my <laughs> god. Hang on a minute. I've got to get headphones and stuff. Oh We're yeah, not me too. Let's find out who's calling on the show. Hello, oh. hello. Oh, hang on. I've got to do this. Hello, ah. hello, caller. Welcome. Oh no. Just plugging you in. Hello, oh god, it's all going pear shape. Hello, caller, welcome to the pear shape show. Well, um, hello, um, hang on, I've got to do this. Oh god, what hang on, are you doing that felt it? Good. That felt good, revenge. Revenge, <laughs> how are you doing, Bob G? Is yeah, loud? hello, Ed, what you why aren't you loud? Well, I'm um, sitting in a park called Harrow Lodge Park in Essex. Oh, oh Harrow, in, Essex? in Essex, yeah, I was in a nature reserve, but I'm now in a park. Oh, you've so. escaped. Yeah, I've escaped. They let me loose, you see. Ah, that's nice. Back into my natural environment. But... Well, it's nice to have you with us on the show. How, um, how have things been since we last spoke to you? A um, bit hectic, so I just thought I'd make the most of an evening walk. And, uh... In the sunshine? Has it been sunny where you are in, in Essex? Yeah, it's been beautiful blue skies all day, but I was stuck indoors. So oh. I've gone for an evening walk and thought I'd sit in the park and watch your wonderful show as usual. Oh, well, what a lovely man you are. So you still work looking after your father? Yeah, there's, it's a very short-term thing, unfortunately. But, um, yes, I'm not in London at the moment. I'm watching a uh, very grumpy swan chase off a million geese. A million geese? Did you count them individually? Well, I got to five and I got lost. But, is the um, swan, swan called Fenton? 
This yeah, is this one called Fenton? Mm, sorry, I'm just being told the phone, the volume on the phone of the thing. Yes, it, I have got the phone volume full up. By the way, full oh, up. It, it's, let yeah. me um, let me take my dusty old headphones out and try calling you El Nef. There we go. Ooh, is that oh. let, let people tell me if that's better. Yeah, much better. Golly, your volume oh, just increased. You see, people blame me. They say, oh, Vobes, you, t- you can turn the volume up, do this, do that. But it's the callers. They're the ones. It's the callers at it's fault. It's all the callers' fault. It's always the call. It's never my fault. Mm-hmm. I could have been a politician. I could have well, been a politician. Well, you can't have it loud being quiet. No, that's know, right. No. Otherwise, You've got to be loud. Exactly. What uh, kind otherwise, of show you'd be called Ed Quiet. Yes. Shush. Shh. That's better. Sean James Cameron says, yes, we've got an up like from him, which is great. Um, so there we are. The j- Mark's beautiful landscape, by the way, says the jacuzzi strand I knew was coming. Yeah, but he's been invited. He is going to be the first naked man in the jacuzzi. And who wouldn't watch that? Well, uh, not not me. I'm standing next to a lake and it looks very, very cold. Oh, mm. yes. Yeah, well, that's, um, that's a shame. Yeah, I love the idea of uh, wild swimming, you know, swimming in... Well, open waters and stuff. I, I wanted to go swimming in wells. I'd be a fair weather wild swimmer. In in nice wells. wells. Yeah, you know, the wells about 30, 40 feet down. I'd just swim in there. Because, you, you, you know, A, you wouldn't touch the bottom because they usually... Doesn't sound so good to me. Bottomless. <laughs> and doesn't sound very safe. No, it sounds like um, <laughs> diving in those really thin, tiny caves. What's that called? There's a name for that. Pot Potholing, is it? Mm. Um, no. Swim... Potty. Swim pot hink. Just potty. plain potty. Anything dangerous, you're potty. Y- yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you don't like the the, 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 the idea of uh, um, swimming in a well, not so good then? No, I mean, I wouldn't even dip my toes in this lake. It's uh, very cold and there's a very angry swan, as I said, so I'm keeping well clear. It's of also swan. full of piranhas, you may not realise that. I imagine uh, yes, it's got Essex nest. is known for its piranhas. Oh <laughs> yes, so, you know, because people get them at Christmas and they don't know what to do with it. They put them in the bath and then Granddad goes and sits in, and then they never see Granddad again. They think, do you know what? These piranhas are getting a bit bigger, but maybe what we should do is put them in the village pond. And so they do that because I know a bloke, Darren Dendy. I won't mention his name, but he put terrapins, I think they were, into um, a lake in um, Ditchling. I won't tell you where it is, but in Ditchling Lake. And Darren Dendy. And apparently they're now the size of dinner plates. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, in uh, one of the parks I filmed in last year, there's um, another side to the park, which I haven't got around to filming yet. Um, the, the other side of dark. the A2. Oh, yeah. And somebody let some terrapins loose in there. And they've been there for decades now. And they've bred and... Some Butted. of them are the size of dinner plates. Yeah, well, and they're nasty it. little snappers as well. They bite your finger off if you're mm-hmm. not careful. Well, that's it. That happened, um, by the way, to uh, Brockhurst um, Fort, Fort Brockhurst, sorry, in Gosport. Um, oh, did it? Yeah, I lived there for a good eight and a half. What years. in the fort? Yeah, no, the moat around the fort. It you still lived has in water. the moat around no, the fort. No, I lived in Gosport. Oh, I see. Um, and um, sorry, it's just uh, I thought you meant that you lived in the fort around the moat. Yeah, well, you were. Um, you? What I told you. <laughs> and what happened? Somebody well, they, put. Yeah, yeah. Back in the seventies and eighties. They put what? What did they, they put, put in it? Sharks. No terrapins. Oh, terrapins. Terrapins. Yeah. They no longer wanted their terrapins, and they could d- you do that with them. tortoises? If you shove tortoises in the lake, would they turn into terrapins? No, they could drown. So it's very different. They look the same, don't they? No, they don't. If you know what you're looking at. Well, they're like dinner plates with legs. Well, tortoises have a much more domed carapace. Oh, it's the shell on so their back. So they're cereal bowls with legs. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, I'm just smiling, I nodding. I wouldn't know the difference. No, I wouldn't I, know the difference. If I, they... I can tell a turtle when I see a turtle, but yeah. terrapins, tortoises, well, no t- idea. Yeah, terrapins are, are just freshwater turtles. So. And so, oh, what is a tur- What's the difference between a turtle and a terrapin then? A turtle is is land. Base. Land? Land. Oh, land. Lives Sorry. on the land. It's a terra. It is know, a terra. Terra firma. Oh. Whereas a terra pin, it's... It, Pinned. No, it does come up onto land to... Um, well, so do turtles, actually, to, to uh, lay their eggs. You see how easy it is? It's so difficult. But terrapins talk about... come out of the water to bask in the sun oh. and then they go back in the water again. Well, the, the terrapins in um, Elton Park, um, near where I was filming, they're very hard to spot. I mean... 
if there wasn't a signpost there pointing them out, I, I guarantee hundreds of people would walk past. And so what is this signpost? Has this signpost got a moving hand on it or something? So every time the thing walks, <laughs> it goes. It's moving well, it with just, it. Um, it just warns you and sort of um, says, "Don't feed them," sort of thing. And uh, yeah, if if that wasn't there, you wouldn't know that they were there. To be honest, oh, okay. I walked past it a hundred times and not seen anything. It's only sort of maybe half a dozen times I've noticed them. They're so well camouflaged. Mm. Yeah. It, it probably points roughly to the, the area where they prefer to bask in the sun. Ah, uh, yeah, there you go. Well, it true. just kind of points to the pond. Oh, oh, right. oh, yeah, oh I see. Enough. This is very <laughs> yeah. Sort of in the general vicinity of the Long Pond. Of the Long Pond. Um, which is, um, incidentally, the name of the first pub to open in my area. Oh, is it? The Long Pond? Years. Uh, Linda Kane yeah. says that uh, think people bought terrapins as a result of watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes, there was a when mean, they started to get me. a bit aggressive. They shove them into ponds. I yeah. suppose they don't know what else to do with them. No, well, no. they should have fed them pizza. <laughs> Yeah, that's No, it. they really shouldn't. <laughs> Do they not like pizza? Well, they might like it, but it's not good for them. Well, no, it's the not, Teenage it's not good for... Ninja Turtles loved pizza. They did. So... Yes. Yeah, yes. that's what that's happened. That's what you meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taking it too literally. Don't give out bad information yes, for don't, pets. Don't give any animal pizza. But it's a surprise so... <laughs> because what was that other one that came out from China or something The where they were all in different coloured um, outfits and they wore... Uh, motorcycle helmets and they did communists a lot. Yeah, no it wasn't communists i'm sure oh, it was okay. a kids tv show that went <laughs> on and on and on and it was this sort of chinese or japanese i can't remember and they're all in these they're all in these sort of one onesies cling thing gimp suits with bicycle helmets on why are my alarm bells ringing no no it's a true that it, somebody will mention it what was the name of the power rangers there we go 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 power oh, rangers! Oh right! Oh goodness! Weren't they the Power Rangers? Go they go had... Power Rangers! Don't be such Sorry. a stranger. Anyway, you didn't see when people got fed up with them that they were chucked into the village pond, although they should have been many years ago. <laughs> well, He's only saying it. that because it was direct competition to Snug and Cozy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I wanted. Well, you're really switched on, aren't you? I wanted people wearing PVC spacesuits with pink shaven heads. Yes. Trump, Trump, I think Trump. The, I think kids would have caught on with that, and the parents. Pink suit, pink heads, and rubber gloves. Hmm? I, I can't see the screen, but I can hear someone eating chocolate. It's yes, not that's, me. That's, that's Eric. You that. Eric is down there in the basement. <laughs> that's right. Oh, Sam, blame Eric, it on me, not Sam. You again? Yes, it is. Anyway, Ed, we better we better I'd let better you be go. Off. Yeah. Thank you so I'm much just for. Just gonna walk home. Yeah. Oh, Thank you for letting us join you on your little stroll in yeah, the park. Yeah, it's been lovely. We've enjoyed take every care, last everyone. second. Yeah. You take care. And you. Have a nice evening. Bye. Yeah. Good to hear you. Bye. Take care, Ed. Bye. There we are. That was Ed Loud. Oh, I love his art. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. Don't need them. Um, so, anyway, take those off. Have a cup of tea. That's a funny cup, but yeah, I'll have some tea. So, ladies and gentlemen, there we are. That was the phone call of the evening. But we may have another one. You never quite know on this show any interesting comments before we go to the next video uh, um bonnie h says i grew up watching the magic roundabout yes i remember the magic roundabout <laughs> it goes on like that for about 20 hours linda kane says my mum used to tell me off for licking my fingers like that like Lol. What? oh what like me <laughs> i only lick them like that when i've been to the bathroom now, um, let us get on with the next video, ladies and gentlemen. And we do that this way. Because the other way we'd get arrested. And it's time for Sean James Cameron. And he has got... Now, I don't quite know if this is the correct pronunciation. Um, he's on the River Darrant. Darrant? Is that how it is, Sean? He'll tell Darrant. us. Darrant. 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 Um, he's on the loop. He's on the loop. And, Yay. ladies and gentlemen, he's on loop seven. There's a beautiful field of horses to the right of me. Well, I must admit, I've got to that point where I've realised that my walk in has gone a bit slower than usual. I'm starting to flag now. What would be really good is to have a nice sit down and I can have a cup of my tea.
it down to be honest. But more importantly, I think it's definitely time for a cup of tea. Definitely beautiful. It would be nice to know how far I've got in the walk. Maybe where they have signs, they could put a sort of indication of how far you've walked from the begin from that direction, or you know. <sighs> Nothing like having a cup of tea and watching the traffic go by. Maybe. Some of the horses will come over. Although I've eaten all my sandwiches. I only brought a few, but I ate them on the way. Don't forget folks, take your litter home with you. Now, the, the brain is saying to stay here for quite a while and enjoy the peace and quiet, a cup of tea. To be honest, I could have a, I could have a sleep, but I'll have this, spend say 10 minutes and then I'll get on. I don't think we're that uh, far from the begin from the end. Right, it's uh, 2.51 and I started quite late. I wanted to start at 11 o'clock, but that is something I've definitely learned from today because with every walk you'll learn something. And what I've learned today is, don't forget, London can be a bit of a nightmare to get around and especially in the mornings. So I think in the future, when I do the next one, I will definitely... Afternoon to you too. What bird is that? I can't see it. Oh, the, oh, the, they're all coming for a cavity. Tell me in the comments below what bird that is. So like I was saying, for the next walk, I'll definitely get out earlier because I would like to start at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at the latest. If you've got any hints and tips for somebody just starting out doing walking, a bit of rambling, then tell me in the comments below. Anyway, I'm, I'm talking too much. Time for a cup of tea while you enjoy the views. comments below is he talking about <laughs> i don't understand what comments is he talking about well someone says dartford warbler da oh dartford someone warbler says seti warbler or ketty warbler and several others say blackbird um linda kane specifically says a blackbird alarming i think alarming blackbird yeah, yeah giving out the uh, alarm oh giving call. out the yes yeah. what a lovely idea though going out for a walk and sitting down with lovely horses behind you and having a nice cup of something warming that was particularly smashing thank yeah. you for that and it's funny isn't it that you can you, you know there you are sitting at home in the comfort of your living room bedroom kitchen bathroom toilet garage train wherever it is attic attic basement basement yes uh, car porch um, garden shed hole at the bottom of the garden where your wife has thrown you whatever it oh, may what, the, the kennel yeah <laughs> wherever it is and yet you're still quite happy to sit and watch people having a cup of tea isn't that lovely yeah. people Cheers. watching people watching is great and uh, that goes for watching cows Us. and cattle and cows and cattle i've not seen thing. cows and cattle have no, but have cups horses of tea. And other well, horses have had seen as horses. well as roads. Yeah, roads have had cups of tea. General other 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 creatures watching. Oh yes, I've watched them having cups of tea. That's too hot. Uh, Thank you <coughs> for the tea. <coughs> Sorry about that. A bit of COVID there. Uh, Mark's beautiful landscape says, "Get the band playing again, Sean." It's always nice when presenters out in the countryside take a nice little band with them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always good. 
Um, Michael White says it's a government drone pretending to be a bird. <laughs> ah, is it spying on you? <laughs> and uh, um, oh, David Vad says it's a throner wobbler. Oh, a it's wobbler. A, oh, a throner wobbler. Yeah, throwing, oh, he, throwing, throwing a, a wobbler. wobbler. Yeah, David Vad is very. I told you he should be writing our scripts. He's, he, he should have a badumtish. I know. When um, we sound get upstairs, I'm going to make sure we have a, we have a, a new intro. <laughs> Um, and, and, and a new... When we get the... upstairs, I almost had the, the, the sound of wait till I get you home. <laughs> wait till I get you... Wait till your father gets home. Um, that was a ser- That was a programme, wasn't it? Wait till your father gets home. Do you remember that? that was that an American thing? I think it was. But anyway, I think it was a cartoon. There was a programme called wait till, uh, wait till I Get You Home, which was um, hosted by... What's his name? Mr Blobby Fame. Oh, what? Noel... Noel Edmonds. That's the one. Uh, yes. And his brother, that? Noel Gordon. Um, yes, I remember him. I don't remember no, the programme particularly. Oh. Uh, Mark Burgess says, uh, just nibbling on some cherry Bakewell flavoured chocolate diet. Oh, you mentioned the word chocolate. It's time for another. You can't it doesn't take fat. a lot, does it? No. Put them in your mouth. Don't get them near me. Right. Half of them went on the floor. Is that... No, I didn't. Something it was my them. pen. Oh, it was your pen. That's right. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he says with a gob full of stuff, but it's time for a quiz. Now, we have two flower quizzes, Ooh. would you believe We're it? We're being spoilt today. We are being spoilt. So, the uh, uh, well, I was going to say the originator of the flower quiz, Bonnie, has got one. But also, as it so happens, as Monsieur Le Norris, Norrie, <laughs> Uh, sorry, that chocolate was rather nice, wasn't it? I'm glad you've taken it away from me. That's just far too, far too good. My, I shall end up in um, spots and things. Is it that what they have when you eat too much chocolate? Yes. I well, I certainly find if I have too much chocolate, yeah, it comes out in my skin a few days later. It comes out my bum. Anyway, um, now I don't feel like eating that chocolate now. It's enough to put you off, isn't it? So, it's like one big rabbit dropping, or maybe it's one it big is, right. voby dropping. Take out the rabbit's bum. So this is from the lovely Bonnie, and she says for next week, meaning this week, local flowers to Hove and Water Hall, wherever that is. Um, so one of them here, I can't read this out because uh, you'll know what it is. She says, I've sent a close up and a wider shot, shot to, so, to show it is wild and not a garden plant. But we can't tell you which one it is. And Bonnie, as ever, will give you the answers in the chat room. So uh, check out that. So here is numero uno on our special flower quiz. Uh, what is that? Ooh. Down on. Oh, I saw something that looked similar to that at the weekend. Yeah? But the leaves looked very different. Ah, uh, is, it, is it a carnation? No, that's not a clematis, is it? I don't know. Don't ask me. I know nothing about anything. The only reason I... I no, it's a bread flower, says Ed Loud. What, a periwinkle, says Linda Kane. Periwinkle, a lot of people saying periwinkle. A We're going to learn. A vinca. Says uh, Rami Boo. Yeah, no, is that like sphincter? Well, it... No, it can't be. Um, <laughs> vinca, periwinkle, a very... Variegated. Variegated. Is it? Oh, a Vinca variegated major. Vinca periwinkle, is Vinca it? Vinca major may be the scientific name, maybe. A periwinkle, know, the ooh, more very... familiar name. Anyway, Bonnie I H. I don't know. What does Bonnie H say? Bonnie H says periwinkle. Periwinkle. And Team oh. Cooper comes in at the last minute with a pansy. Yeah, it's a pansy. That's right, mate. <laughs> well done. So, oh, yes. next up is this one. Is this the uh, Spanish one? Um, well. Is it well? No. <laughs> Well, what I mean is, mm. Mary Hammond and the lovely and her lo- well, the lovely Mary Phil. Hammond and her lovely husband Philip. Yeah, Phil. They came and visited me in my garden no, the other day. Did they, they did. Did they do gardening for you? No, they didn't. But I pointed out the bluebells yeah. that are growing in my garden, and I said that um, you know, I, I said I wasn't sure which type they were, and she said that they are definitely the um, Spanish. Uh, Spanish ones in my garden, which but, they had a really broad have a really broad leaf so and did they look like that i've got nothing to compare it to but yes i think they might be the spanish ones they come they, they grow quite up whereas i think <laughs> sorry I think. there's a flick of the switch there i meant to go to that picture of course whereas i think the native bluebells even as they're um opening up like that i think they the, the buds start to droop over the first well we've got a lot of guesses says. there bonnie's uh, saying hybrid 
Uh, Elaine Whitelock says bluebell, Spanish bluebell. Vinca is a periwinkle bluebell, bluebell. Higher Chetroids non scripta, says Sean James Cameron, just to be smart. Uh, Mike Stevens says it's a grape hyacinth. Bluebell looks like a native camas, whatever that is. It's That's a bluebell, says Dean M. <laughs> a blue ding dong. Uh, Mrs. Bucket says it's something else. Uh, lovely fox, Spanish bluebell, blah, 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 ding, 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 dong, hyacinth. hyacinth. Well, so, they are in the hyacinth family, aren't they? So are we saying it's the uh, variegated, is that what, to, in the end, it's, it's Bonnie a Bonnie H says it's Spanish hybrid version. Yeah. Okay, so th let's move on to this one. Is that a periwinkle? I don't actually know what a periwinkle. No, 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 the first one was a periwinkle, wasn't it, yeah, in the end? That's, um, isn't that mallow? Is that mallow? Yeah, it looks mallowy, doesn't it? Although... Fewer, Leaves look wrong. Few, fewer petals. Yeah, actually, that's not a that's not no, a common not. mallow or a tree mallow. <laughs> yeah. We we know we know what mallow looks like. Ed Loud says that's clearly a wholemeal flower. Oh, <laughs> honesty, honesty, honestly, is honesty? it no, no, honesty? No, no. Uh. Lunaria. Well, what is it? Come on, be honest with us. So <laughs> tell us the truth. I'll keep quiet, Bonnie says. Linda Kane. I have a white one. Nice. Is it a car? Kind of honesty, says Bonnie. Honesty. I've never heard of honesty. Have you? No, me neither. Never have. We learned something every day. Oh, Ian Dance said dead nettle, but I actually we I, know. What dead I remember is. what dead nettle is because uh, Bonnie H taught, H taught us that one a, a little while back. Yeah, we've learned that one. So what is this? This is looks like it's on a shrub. It does, doesn't it? So it's, um, um, kind of. Hmm. So this is a wild, it's got to be wild. I don't know whether there was a close-up, she said, or whether that was in a different one coming in. Uh, they, are, they are very cute, aren't they, those little tiny Anne Wright says it's honesty. We've gone past honesty now. Sorry. Yeah, don't, yeah, yeah but it, sometimes it it's takes the, a while yeah, for them that's true. to catch up. because yeah. um, Catch up. So this is, is it quince uh, or Cydonia? Siberia? Is it, uh, Elaine Whitelock says it's quince. Is it chain of moles? Whatever that is. Chanemelies. Uh, Maybe that's how to pronounce it. I have no, no idea. Rhododendron, idea. Blackthorn, <laughs> Hawthorn, says Mark Don. It's definitely not Blackthorn, is it? No, because Blackthorn's already out. And yeah. it's definitely not Hawthorn, because those hibiscus leaves are wrong. Plant. Oh, that's a good guess. Hibiscus, good game, good Cotton game. Cotton Easter, says Sean James Cameron. Uh, either a bud or whatever. So now Bonnie is going to tell us it is... This week it is... We're just waiting for the uh, Shamona Mel is it not Chain a wildflower, I don't think. Oh, well, we want to find out. <laughs> Mark's Beautiful Landscape says, wild, it's livid. It's livid. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's a not the nine o'clock news joke. Um, not quince. No. But what is it? Where is she? Quince. Quince. Oh, it is quince. What, whatever quince is. Nope. I don't got a clue. And it looks pretty anyway. Here is, oh, this is the quince. Presumably this is the quince to say it was wild. There it is, growing by a windmill. I think oh, I've walked past that windmill. I've walked past there. Look, you can see my footprints. <laughs> um, I can also I, see the graffiti saying and Vogue, then I nipped Vogue's into the, was here. Yes, and then I nipped into the hedge about and there. And was, uh, the, oh, Emptied crikey. my bladder. Vobes was nose as well. Vobes, Vobes was here, Vogue's was nose. Uh, no, oh, no, now, what no. about this? We passed one of these the other day. Ooh. Is it a triffid? <laughs> Is it a rubber plant, says Dean Cooper? I don't think it's a rubber plant. I don't know. Uh, I would have known what a quince looks like if I was open. Oh, right. Really, quince? Nothing like quince. Ha ha. Cowslip, says Sean cowslip. James. Cowslip. Cowslip. There we go. Mm -hmm. You can always tell it's a cowslip because there's one on its back going, Oh, that did not hurt. <laughs> Badum tesh. Yeah, there we go. That is uh, cowslip. That's the last in our special Bonnie cowslip. What is the plant you're looking at quiz? So there we go. Isn't that Lovely. fantastic? Thank you, Bonnie. Thanks, Bonnie. Uh, and apparently these are all out now. And if you go to uh, near where she lives, you'll be able to see them all. Loveliest pronunciation is colnaster. I said cotton Easter. Cotton Easter. But I have no idea how it was. <laughs> is that like pattern, pattern, pattern? whatever I don't know shall I find out how it's supposed to be pronounced yeah you've got a special translation thing thanks Bonnie that was brilliant later on in the show we're going over to Andrew Norris's special plants and they are all plants that are out in Croatia meanwhile on the Vobi One-Eyed Kenobi show we have a phone call hello caller 
This is the pronunciation service. Ah, the pronunciation Yay. service. Thank goodness for that. Okay, so there's it's a station. Totally there's a station in Wales with the longest name. Can you just do that one first? That's correct. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. So, Try this one out. Yeah. Katoni Asta. Katoni Asta. Katoni Asta. Katoni Asta. Okay a... then. Katoni Asta. It's the Katoni Asta show starring <laughs> Katoni. No, they, they, they used to be a service for people that worked in TV, but you could phone up this BBC department and uh, they would tell you how to say certain words. Oh, right. Katoni Asta. What? Mrs. Bucket. It was, it, it was called the BBC Pronunciation Department. Ah, yes. Uh, I think that's the department that tells um, presenters how to say Shrewsbury. Uh, what the locals of Shrewsbury get very upset. But I always say Shrewsbury because that's how they used to say it in the old days. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Or exactly. If you can't say you put you make it shorter to Hlanfair PG. <laughs> say again? Flanfair PG. Flanfair PG. Is that the Which that's is the short... shortened version of Flanfair Spokesman? Flanfair PG. So you you could get. I want a I want a one day return from Nottingham to Flanfair PG. On a day, what is it? The one day. What is that advert used to? You know, when you used to get a day return. A day return. The old days when people. Does anybody go on a train? I haven't been on a train for years. It's far too In London, you can't buy a return ticket. Can you not? What? You can on, on buses and on buses and trains. You, you cannot can only buy single tickets. Well, I suppose you're only going one way, aren't you? But if you pay with an oyster, hmm, then it works out a bit cheaper. What if you pay with a muscle? <laughs> on, on Why did and they then, call it oyster? Anybody know? Why did they call it oyster? Because the world is your. Oh, the world is your oyster. The world is your lobster. Ah, and, yeah. Uh, if you go somewhere and you get onto another bus, if you can, if you do it within an hour, you only pay the one fare. And how do they know? Because it, um, when you swipe, it oh, registers. See. <coughs> can you do anything in cash on the buses anymore? Pay, you know, sure. thruppany. You Nothing. can't. You've got to have Nothing. an oyster card, have you? You've got to have an Oyster card, and if you go on there and there's no money on your Oyster card, you you are allowed an emergency fare. Oh, are you? So you can so you, so you can go for free, and then when you put money on your card again, it, it then takes, takes it off. Oh, I see. Can your emergency fare take you from John O'Groats to Land's End? Well, the problem is, if you have an emergency fare and halfway through they stop the service and they say this bus is terminating get off yeah you can't complete your journey so you could sue them couldn't you so you've got to walk oh seeing you've got to walk that's not so fun but i missed the days last summer when london buses were free for six months oh because of the covid thing yes because they didn't want people going up to the driver so you had to get on the bus in the middle and um it was great. You just jumped on. There was there was just me and the driver, hmm. and it was like having my private taxi service to the allotment site. And the last service to put out, to, that you had to pay, where they where, so the last bus service where they reintroduced the oyster hmm. was the bus service I had to catch to go to the allotment site. And I questioned the driver. And I said, "How come this is the last one to go back to normal?" Yeah, and he said, "Well." A lot of staff are on this route, and families. They live on that route. Yeah. And he said, well... Sorry. Hello? Hello? Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I freaked you out, because I, uh, that was my phone. Oh, right. <laughs> it's complicated. He had his own voice coming back at him. He was like, Sean what? from London. It's Sean from London, <laughs> yeah. Well, we, the pronunciation is what? Sorry. <laughs> Oh, right. So, oh, that's interesting. Wouldn't it be a good idea if instead of having to pay, everybody had to pay a TV licence, there was just one fee, let's say 50 quid. Everybody paid 50 quid and you could have free trains and free buses wherever you wanted to go. I did do once where you could pay for, um, for the year. So you get a season ticket that mm. goes for 
for the year. Anything. And it cost it cost me eight hundred eight hundred pounds. Well, that's a bit expensive. So I put it onto my oyster. You know, you 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 only had the best bit. I put it onto my oyster card. Yeah. And as I was walking through Piccadilly Circus, I thought, right, I'll put this safe, put it into the wallet, and it must have fallen out. So I literally, I lost eight hundred pounds ten oh. minutes after I put it on my card. Oh, that's an outrage! Oh. What have you put up the Amazon on there? Um, that is a picture of what came up as a result for my search for wild quince, because there's argument or discussion in the in the chat as to whether that was indeed wild quince that she. Put up a picture uh, oh, that's body. charming! There it is. Look, that's what somebody has got a quince tree on the on the allotment site, and he's trying to make jam from it. But Kit. he's got a problem; he gets it too hard. He gets it too what? Hard. He wants to know how to make his jam floppy. How to make the jam floppy? Mm. Yeah, cause for some reason he gets it solid, and it, that it doesn't come out of the jar again. Oh, well. Isn't it something to do with pectin? You've got to have pectin. It yes, it's, it's something to do aspic. with that. Aspic. You've got aspic and pectin and things like that. I, well, my suggestion was, is it similar to... Because when you do elderflower champagne, which I'll be doing at the end of next month... As you do. You don't add any pectin because it's already on the flowers. Ah. I suppose, yeah, because the birds have been and pecked it. Brilliant. Okay, we've got that sorted out. Thank you, Mr Sean James Cameron. I'll see you on Wednesday on The Loop. And uh, it is correct. The rumour is uh, correct. It is my birthday on Friday. Oh, fantastic. Uh-huh. Well, I'm glad That's we cool. got that out because we'll have another happy birthday message coming out. Take I'll care. Look up. A, I'll send you a bit of cake. <laughs> yeah, please do. We need it. Uh, we that. don't get much sugar in this show. <laughs> Take Thanks care. for calling in. Bye. Bye. That was Sean James Cameron uh, from London. And... Thanks. Miss Touch Prevention Enabled. Ooh, oh. who's this woman, Miss Touch? <laughs> I'm sure she will uh, have many court cases. Oh, hang on. Swipe twice to exit. Yeah. Sorry about that. Hello, caller. Oh, I think that was... Sh- hello? I think that was Sean James going off. Um, Strange. Yeah, only because I had this... This phone has a mistyped... Protect. I don't know what that means. Mm. It's very freaky. Very anyway, um, all very good. So there's an argument going on in the chat room. We love a bit of that. Well, it wasn't an argument. It was, it, was a, it was a discussion. Is it? Is that a real flower? We'll have to get Bonnie and have to have her staked up like the wicker man and set fire because that's what people do in these these days. <laughs> the internet isn't the internet unless somebody's unhappy about somebody and puts it on. Especially if you're unhappy about Keir Starmer coming into a pub in Bath. That was the funniest thing I've seen for a long time. Get out of my pub. That man is not allowed in my pub. Oh, that was hilarious. Anyway, uh, enough of this. Uh, Let us go into uh, the quietitude of the lovely video box. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I'm not there. (laughs) Where is the lovely I wonder why. She's just disappeared. Well, it's just me tonight, folks. uh, Thanks very much for joining me. I'll get my coat then. (laughs) I'll be off. It's too easy to press the wrong button in this system, you know, especially if you're all fingers and thumbs. Anyway, enough of this gay banter. All fingers and thumbs. Who's next on our thing? Oh, yeah, talking about the quince tree, have you ever thought about talking to trees? We know a bloke who does a little bit of talking to trees, and he's a very nice bloke, and his name is... Oh, he's a very nice bloke. He's a very nice bloke. His name is Sean too. Yeah, I mean, Sean as well. Not Spelled differently, though. Yes, S H. A U N. Yeah. A U. A U N. Got a video for us? Of course he has. Hello, friends. As a change to my discovery walks, I'm now doing Talking with Trees. This is where I pick, choose a particular tree, and I go out and find that tree and sit with it and read some poetry. The particular tree I'm looking for is the blackthorn. So I'm going to look for a blackthorn. I've got a lovely bit of poetry, a very short bit of poetry to read to it, and I hope you enjoy the sights I'm seeing, as well as the poetry that you're about to hear. Oh. Yawning horse. Hello, darling. 
I'm on my quest for blackthorn. Look at this bloody blackthorn. Where do you think I can go? Is down there, do you think is a beautiful place to go? Down there. Then I shall go that way, my beautiful. Thank you. Oh, can you hear the horse? I heard that too. In the distance. Right, thanks for the directions. Thank you, sweetheart. I've seen a blackthorn tree just over yon, so I'm going to head over there. And this poem is called The Song of the Blackthorn Fairy by Cicely Mary Barker. The wind is cold, the spring seems long awaking, the woods are brown and bare. Yet this March, soon April will be making all things most sweet and fair. See, even now, in hedge and thicket tangled, one brave and cheering sight, the leafless branches of the blackthorn sprangled with starry blossoms white. As well as composing such wonderful poetry, Cicely was an accomplished artist and drew some beautiful pictures of fairies. Her first book was published nearly 200 years ago and it was called Flower Fairies of the Spring. Thank you so much for listening to my Talking with Trees. I'll see you on the next one. Well, I have to say that was absolutely lovely. I love a love a bit of poetry. Yes. Talking to the trees. Beautiful. Reading poetry to the trees. I must have a go at that myself. It's like taking a composer and doing some music to the trees. Like Bach would be a good composer. Uh, Can you think of any more? Go on. Um, <clears throat> no. I ha. can't think ha. of any more. But I'm sure there are plenty of other tree composers uh, out there. Um, they just haven't uh, handle. You could take a <laughs> piece of bow and turn it into a handle. Anyway, good video, nice poem. Thank you very much, lovely, Sean. Lovely, thank we you. We look forward to the next one, um, which is fantastic. So there we go. Um, let me just have a look through our little thing. We also have another video of um, Bonnie has sent in a video of Zorro, which gets me confused because Andrew Norris also has a Zorro, and Andrew Norris has sent in a flower quiz. So I don't know if there's something going on there because my brain is ready to be percolated <laughs> in a space capsule. But whatever. Anyway. You're it's... not going to boil... boil blah, blah, blah. You're not going to boil your head. No, you? no. I'm not going to boil my head. <laughs> oh, blimey. Imagine that. That would be silly. Um, I'm just looking to see if David Vad has come up with any more composers and trees because he is the uh, comedy man of the moment. Not yet. Not yet. So there we are. There, if he doesn't come up with it, there isn't. Then any. there isn't, no. There absolutely yeah, you're quite isn't. right. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> He's so. our barometer. Ooh. He's our barometer for uh, any more gags. Yes. Gaffs, so any more gags? Have. Any more gags? Have you got any more gags? No. All right, fair enough. Uh, anyway, that was lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Sean, we do look forward to that. Talking with trees, this is fantastic. If you could lovely. get the trees to talk to you... That would be even better. That's I'd like. That's a good game. Good game. Oh, it um, does make me cringe when people say they can hear trees talking back. It's like, oh no! <laughs> I saw a clip of someone doing that. Uh, 
basically being interviewed on uh, some breakfast. What? And they said show. the trees talk to me. Yes. And the trees are talking to. Me. Mind you, there are people who say that they hear things in their head. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's one thing to to feel like trees talk back to you. It's quite another to go live on TV and say, "Oh yes, the tree is saying such and such." Yeah, but there are those people that say the the Earth is flat, and I've seen them on yep, live on TV. Yeah, you make a fine point. You I mean, make a fine basically, point. Basically, TV Hush want people mouth. who have odd things to say. Otherwise, it's very. If you get somebody who goes this. Oh yes, I, I hung my washing up today. Oh yes, and 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 they got dry, right? Well, that was the event that I hung my washing on a line and they got dry, and it'd be just boring, wouldn't it? Mm. It's like people tuning in to two close friends who get together in a house. Uh, put a few neon signs behind them and make out that they're international superstars and people would that tune they are in interesting enough for people to actually come to and sit watch. down and watch them <laughs> drinking tea. I can't think of anything more ridiculous. And then the worst part would be that people encourage it by sending in videos. <laughs> yes, I know. Can or you believe competitions. it? I know. I mean, you know, those poor sods. They would have to continue doing that every Wednesday. Friday and Monday. Do you know what? I think they must be stupid. They must, you know, they must deserve it. They must deserve what they get. <laughs> Keep really. making them do it. Why yes, not? I don't understand it myself. <laughs> uh, Mark Donnie McLeod says, I know a song called The Trees. Actually, or is it The Forest? And didn't The, the Cure do um, a long song called oh, The it? Forest? I think so. Um, also, Station Masters, oh no, that's the not cure. the one. Did they do it? Uh, Mike, it the Stevens, <laughs> Mike Stevens said, I heard the mountains and they just said to respect them. Fair one. Oh, the nice. The mountains said they respect us. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if the, the, the trees could talk, they would say, Oi, take that bloody axe. Uh, Dean M. Cooper says, Trees do talk to you. Why would you hug them? Well, if, yes, but it's when people say that they actually speak, like in words. That, yes, because they haven't got vocal cords. No. Have they? It's just, I mean, I suppose it's the same as um, when I've, you know, just through the flow of speaking, have associated a particular tree with being male or female or masculine or feminine. And um, and someone else has said, oh, oh you're anthropomorphising the tree. Me, 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 me. So it's probably the same thing. It's just, it's just one of those but pet peeves, isn't often it? Often you hug dogs and cats or tiny little mice. They don't talk to you. No. I communicate with trees, of course. And I talk at them, but they don't talk to me. But, you know, that's just different perspectives, isn't it? It's when my car goes off the road and I'm out of control and I'm saying, get out the bloody way! <laughs> they, they don't listen. <laughs> Straight into them. Or their reactions are too slow. It's like, oh, there's a... Oh, well, he's dead now. Not to worry. We'll be here for another oh. hundred years. Yeah. What? The Red Moon Conjure just reminded me of something. What was that? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I say this with a, with, a, with a cringe. There's people out there that marry and have carnal knowledge of trees. True story. They marry a tree and then they make sexual love to a tree by rubbing elements of their body against yes, it. Yes, let's not go into any further. Well, I'm, yes, not, I'm not going into yes. any further. I'm just making You're describing it... the act. Yes, I'm describing <laughs> it. the out. But the harder thinking. <laughs> and there must be somebody out there who's got a harder thinking, who if, needed it to be just blatantly... If anyone doesn't put... know what carnal knowledge means, then we don't need well, to... Well, I know what... Um, I know they have the knowledge of the carnals. Uh, they were a lovely family. The canals. Yes, they were a German the, the family, boats. weren't they? They came over a juggling <laughs> act, I think, the carnal family. Mm. And uh, they did uh, Fred Carno, wasn't he one of? Them? Oh no, that was a different bloke. He he had Fred Carno's. Uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, I would talk <laughs> to my motorbike, says Graham Cass. Uh, yeah, quite. I, yes, I'd... people talk to their cars, don't they? As if that's going to make them last longer. Colonel Cragratty says, "Have you not heard of Ents? They talk. Well, that's quite different. That's an Ent. That's not an average tree, is it? Yeah. Plus, <laughs> it's a made-up one, as far as I understand. Shh. Shh. It's in a novel." I mean, that's like saying... I wish Ents were real. I wish. If I could have one wish on this earth, and that would be... That would be it. That would be it. I, I, if I had one wish, I'd wish that I could have two more wishes. <laughs> so that, that I've always that got is one greedy. more wish. If you've been, give, if you've been granted uh, one wish, yeah. 
then do you take that wish? But then if you had any one wish, you could wish that you could have what, another wish. What are wish. you going to do then? Wish that, you know, for, for that second wish that you make, are you going to say, oh, no, I wish no, no, for three whole, more wishes? No, no, no. I wish for four no, more no, wishes. No, no, no. The it's going to backfire on you somewhere. Of course it won't. The philosophy <laughs> is if you have one wish, you then could wish for two wishes because you've always got the spare wish to say, could I have another wish? And then you've got the second wish would be anything that you wanted to wish for. And then if you didn't like that one wish, you could say, could I have another wish? And can I wish the thing I wished for before isn't the thing anymore? Sorry, I was trying to stop my brain from going... No, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's like time travel. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not talk about time travel. No, well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> well, oh, well, time travel is a very... if you go back in time and you stand on a butterfly... No, that's the wrong quote. Yeah, because if you stand on the butterfly back in time, the hurricane that was going to come last week hasn't come because it stopped to boil the kettle and make a cup of char. Yeah. Yeah, dear, oh dear. Uh, be careful what you wish for, says David Vad. Well, we've been wishing that he would write the script. That would be an improvement, yeah. but uh, that doesn't happen. Mike Stevens says, Where your wish you? you can't. What your wish cannot be for yourself. Who says? Where is it written that you cannot wish for it yourself? That's but, what I... but there is some sage advice as well. Um, Bonnie H says, be careful what you wish for. Yes, somebody else said that. Uh, David oh, Vett also said, be careful what you wish oh, for. Oh, yes. But, um, so he did. Well, yeah, but if... You, OK, so you take that and you go, OK, I will be careful. I will not wish for a 10-ton weight to fall from the sky and flatten me like a pancake. I'm not going to wish that. I will wish for something else, that a, a paper clip fall from the sky and doesn't flatten me, just bounces off my head. Now, that would be amazing if a paperclip just at that moment went bing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? It would be a sign. It would be cray-cray. Somebody would be going, that's a sign. Did I just that's say a that? sign. <laughs> You'd go, no, it's a paperclip. It's not a sign. If, it was a, if I was wishing for a sign to come crashing down... It'd be like something like this. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Play a video. <laughs> Oh, I was going to read that comment out, but now it's gone. Oh, read it. Stephen Field says, <laughs> says need a TARDIS. Uh, wish for the fish and chip shops round here to be open on a Monday. That would be good. Yeah, Lord Jeffrey, I think you're right. Fish and chip shop. A top 10 pe a paper, uh, t a 10 top, a 10 ton paper. Who needs a 10 ton paperweight? If you've got 10 tons of paper... You wouldn't no, because yeah, you see. I'm trying to think of a clever answer, but no. nope, brain cells Can gone. Can someone Poot. please tell Richard that wishes aren't actually a real thing? Thank you, Red Moon Conjure, Conjure. Um, yes, they're not real. Oh, I've just told Miss. No, you just told me. <laughs> Stop mucking about you. Oh crikey! Where are you? She's up in blooming Lancashire, isn't she? The Red Moon person. Yes, she is. You're in. You're in Lancashire. We we would um we went through Lancashire, didn't we? When we went up to Cumberland. We did. And um, I've always wanted to go to Lancashire. Well, I have actually been to Lancashire once before because that is where they filmed that wonderful film with Hayley Mills. Um, uh, one Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. No, it wasn't that one. It was uh, the other one, The Whistle Down the Wind. Oh, such a lovely film with um, Hayley Mills and Bernard Lee and um, a, young, a young Alan... Alan, yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. Linda Kane will tell me who it is. Linda Kane knows. Alan, not Alan Ladd, no, English actor. Alan Bates, thank you. Alan Bates, there we go. Oh, God. It's the Orgasmatron. Oh, gosh, that is so... It, people don't realise how, how sensitive a scalp really is, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, my point was... I was Thanks, champs. What I was going to say is Sorry. we should go up to Lancashire... And uh, find out... And answer the phone. And answer the phone. Because we've done the... Whoop. Oh, I've done this m mistouch thing. I don't know what that mistouch thing is. Hello. Anyway. Hello, caller. Welcome to the show. And nobody there now. Oh, hang on. There is. There is, because I didn't turn the volume down. Sorry about that. Hello. Hello. Who's that? Um, yeah. Uh, Lancashire reporting. Yes, oh, it's yeah, Mark. there we are, Mark. Donny. Oh, yeah, McLeod. you're up. Of course, I forgot you're up there. Red Moon, what's her name? Conjure. And um, Mark Donny are two of our Lancashire reporters. Yeah, there you go, you see. And Whistle Down um, the Wind. Isn't that a marvellous film, Whistle Down the Wind? I remember it. Um, like it was yesterday. Vaguely, as a kid or something. 
It, yeah, um, that's it. Um, it's the, the classic line is, he ain't Jesus, he's just a fella. Yeah. <laughs> He's not the Messiah. He's a very, he's a very naughty boy. boy. No, that wasn't the film. <laughs> I know that's not the film. I that haven't watched the film, film you're talking about, though. I've watched this one. Yeah, though. this is a great <laughs> film. How Go are you? Eat your baby yeah. droppings. How are you, Mark? Oh, you know, I'm well. Yeah, I'm, 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 um, I've been out. You've been out? Yeah. I've been out cycling for a few miles. It was good. Ah, uh, um, yes, you've back start, you've blah, 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 You started cycling again. Yeah, well yeah. done. Yeah. Um, well, I couldn't do for a while because of health reasons, but mm -hmm. I can now. So I'm making up for lost time. 38 miles today. 38 so, miles on a bicycle? Yeah. Hmm? Um, I was trying to get back How to long did that... Hang on a minute. Just You can't just plant that... And Don't then gloss over on. that bit. Mm. How <laughs> long did 38 miles on a bicycle take you? Hang on, I'll look at the thing. Uh, look at the thing. When did you start and when did you finish? Seconds. Seconds? One hour, 47 minutes, 27 seconds. No, it yeah. didn't. 38 miles? Yeah. I used to cycle 20 miles and that would take two hours. Have you got an electric assisted yeah, bike? No. Is it a motorbike? God, blimey. He's Wait really a minute, it's a motorbike. It's a motorbike. Is it a motorbike? No, mate, it's a bicycle. It's a, it's a push. It's a spicycle. Well, the reason it takes so long to do such a journey is because, unlike where you are, where most stuff is flat, up here it just goes up and down. <laughs> so if you were doing the same sort of like mileage in, say, like somewhere like, I don't know, Lincolnshire or Cambridgeshire, I'd probably do like 80 miles a day. Not a problem. Mm. I don't understand that. I don't. I don't get it because surely clambering up the hill takes you. It, it, it irons it out, doesn't it? You go up the hill, it takes you a long time to go up the hill. Then you come down the other side, it's faster. So they yeah. cancel each other yeah. out, don't yeah. they? Yeah, it's faster. Then there's a road that goes across that, so it stops your uh, inertia because you have to stop the traffic going the other way. Yeah, but I don't... And then you've got to start again. 38 miles, you can't have done... So. I can't, but I don't believe you because that... Cycle 38 miles That's like 20 miles hours, an hour. 20 miles... Yeah, that's doable. Well, not for me, well... Are you going at 20 miles an hour on average, then? Um, about 16. Nip, nip, cosy. Um, yeah, well... I don't think I've only I ever done 15 say, max. My goodness. And just, that was only for a short I am, period. I, I take my hat. I haven't got a hat, but I t uh, you are you, amazing. You, you are... Never mind Bradley Wiggins. It's a hard hat over there. Oh, yeah. There's my Mardi Gras hat up there. Uh, never mind Bradley Wiggins. In fact, I think we should both stop. Hang on a sec. Just bear with us. I can't hear you for the minute because I've actually got to take the hat off. So here we go. We're going to take our hats off to, to Mark Donnie McLeod. Exactly. His return to cycling. Yeah. Well, you know, you can never go yourself. You know. He's talking. We haven't got our headphones on because well, we have. All oh, right. We had to take our hats off, you see. Sorry. We had to put hats on to take yeah, them off. Cheeky bugger. Who's a, who's a cheeky bugger? <laughs> what, say that again, we missed that. Yeah. What? Look at that cheeky bugger, uh, Crows up. Yeah. Um, what? Yeah, going on about flat Lancashire. He wants to come down here, mate, and see how flat yeah, it is. Yeah, bloody Cumberland. <laughs> Cumberland is overpaid and overrated. Well, we're, we're, we're coming up to Lancashire to see you. We're, oh, good. Yeah. we're going to come and visit you. We've done the Cumberland thing and the curly sausage, so that was all a bit dull and boring. We're going to yeah, come we, up to we Lancashire. Have, we, have, we, have, we have hot pots, you see. Oh, much nicer. We hot pots. We have Eccles cakes. And we anyway, have, we've got uh, two contacts up there. We've got, um, what was the name? Um, Red Moon, Red Moon Conjure. Conjure. Conjure and you. Where are they? I don't know who they are. She's in Lancashire. Oh, I'm look, she sure says that's happening. unbelievable. That's on the achievable. Lan Oh, that's achievable on the Lancashire Moors when, though it's up and down. Oh, there you go. We... Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm not in for, you know, I, I don't claim anything as BS. You know, I just, I just do what I do, you know. We know that, um, and you're a nice man when you do it. You're a nice well, man when you I'm don't do it, it too. I mean, I'm not well, suggesting for a moment well, that you're I'm not nice to, at all. Is I'm trying to build up to get to the point where I'll be doing 100 miles a day. That's what I want to do. 100 oh, miles a day? Yeah. Uh, the whole point is I'm building up to... Um, I've got this thing in my mind and I'm telling myself 
that I can do this um, Edinburgh to Athens. So I want to do Edinburgh to Athens. How so far, what do. distance is Edinburgh to Athens? About 2,000 miles, just under 2,000 miles. So you're going to do that in 20 days? Well, I don't know how long it's going to take. Well, you but... wanted to do 100 miles a day. What would you do about the water in between? Between water? Well, mean, we're on an you, island, you see. I don't know well, whether you've noticed this. If you've ever left Lancashire, you might oh, come yeah. to a beach at some point. <laughs> do you know, down, down south, yeah. they made a big tunnel and they put a train in it. Oh, that and is true, actually. Guys, that is true. I didn't think you're a smart yeah. man. You are. A, yeah. I didn't think of that. <laughs> you so got one on me there. Down there. Get on the train. Yeah. Have a nice rest on the train, you know, munchy, munchy. Can Come you not... The other side. Could you not get a fixed bike that you have in a gym? Whatever they call, what do they call those exercise bikes in a gym? <laughs> so, no, I'm not going on one of those things. No, it's no, no. Thing. The point is when you're on the train, so that no, you no, no, continue no, cycling. No, mm. What is he? I would use that time to sleep. You can't do that. Not if you're doing hundred miles a day. Yeah, because you got to sleep, right? You got oh, to sleep. That's rest. true. He's so, so clever, isn't he? You wouldn't need the exercise bike. You just need a little yeah, frame uh, to put the back yeah, wheel on, and then. Well. Let's put it this way. Between the ages of like 15, 16, 17, yeah. I was um, doing a lot of cycle touring then. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and I was averaging around about 70, 80 miles a day. Uh, when I got into my 30s, I managed to do it. I managed to get the John O'Groats to Land's End and do that in what was it? Um, Three hours. Did it in, in 16 days. 16 days from John O'Groats to Land's End? Yeah. It's You're safe. super it's, fit. I was, yeah. I've got to get back to that. Um, and this is the thing, you know, it's like one of the problems of being ill is it makes you depressed because you can't be the person you wanted to be. You, you know you are. So um, one of the things I do is like, as soon as I can get back right, you know, it's, it's back to training. And I will push myself to, to do what I need to do. I want to do this. And it's kind of like saying, you know, I'm 60 this year. Are you? You're 60? And Unbelievable. Yeah. And I want to be able to do that. The next one I want to do on my 65th birthday, I want to be in Peking. In, in uh, Sorry, in Beijing. I want to cycle right across the Silk Road. Right oh, wow. through to, from Europe to China. It's been done, lots of people do it. Most of them are in the 30s and 40s, but I want to do that. I want to do that um, Silk Road run. And because, will you take and, your? And will you take one of your I'll, instruments? I'll will I you can sit back and say I managed it? Yeah, you know? I, I'm. I, I, I don't doubt you will do it. Will you take your? Um, your? Um, I'm scratching my chest here. Guitar. Um, guitar. Will you take a guitar with you and play in the evenings? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. If if it depends. I mean, you could be. Absolutely naked, <laughs> not up to doing anything. Um, uh, um, I managed like 20 odd miles last week, and because I wasn't really like on it, um, <laughs> when I got home, I went, I had a shower, ate a sandwich, and went to bed. <laughs> My God. Out. Well, listen, I am, I am, I am, you know, it makes me feel like just walking over the downs is nothing. I'm going to give up. I'm going to get on my unicycle and go round the moon, I think. Shame you sold it. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell true. you what you should do. Yeah. Right? When you go in, in your van, you go on a thing. You know when you do your two two things. Yeah. yeah. Go on your bike, because you can cover far more things, and you can fit. I'm trying to work out at the moment how to fit the you know the cameras to the bike. Yeah. So I've got one that can go on the handlebars. Yeah. I've got another one that can go on my trailer at the back. Right. So I've got a bicycle, and I'm carrying. I've got a trailer behind me. It's, so, it's tr I, I get I get what you're saying about travelling further afield. The, I mean, I've often thought about doing some videos on a bike, but to be honest with you, to stop the bike, to get the camera off, to put it on a tripod, yeah, to get all the it, different little shots is too much. And, it's and, the stabilisation of the picture. It, yeah. And unless you've got the auto stable on the thing, because otherwise, because the bike moves up and down as it bounces around and all that business. It's, and, and also, you've got stuck with this bike, whereas when you walk, you can just nip into the bushes and... Spend a anyway, listen, we're moving, we've got to move on because uh, yeah, we've yeah, got a couple of things to fit in, but that's so impressive. Tell us about it and send us um, well, uh, your uh, itinerary. If you can get going and everything goes to plan, 
I shall be reporting back to you from wherever I am. Fantastic. Oh. Well, I'm impressed about the 38 yeah, well, miles, let alone the John O'Groats to wherever else. To tell you where I am and how many miles, whatever that I'm That is, you are the legend. <laughs> no, we will get a map on the screen, put a little pin in it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Mark, no. lovely to talk to you. In a bit. Take care. Ciao for now. Bye. Bye. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, super. Well, what about that? Um, so uh, just a quick message out there. You know who you are. He has gone. And that's that message done. Um, and finally, we've got to go. We're running out of time. And I want to get these t uh, last couple of bits in. Um, otherwise, I shall have to shoot Julia. Which is not a nice thing to do. No, I don't think my boys will be too happy about that. No. So, uh, now, Bonnie sent in a video, and this is of Zorro, not Andrew Norris's Zorro. This, this, is, is, this is the second Zorro of second the Second Zorro. You wouldn't believe that you could have two Zorros. Bobosphere family. The, yeah, exactly. She said, can you put some music to it? So I said, yeah, no, no problem with that. But then I looked at the video, and, and she's talking in it, and I thought, well, if I put music, you won't be able to hear her talking. Plus the fact it's very faint to hear her talking, and there's a lot of wind noise. I don't think she'd been eating baked beans. I think it was just the atmosphere. So um, I haven't put any music to it. It's a very short little piece, but it's very nice with the dog running around. So let us uh, go in there and have a look. And if you strain your ears, you can hear Bonnie talking about the lovely dog at the same time. So here it is. Walking a dog. Walking a dog like sorrow. He's half Collie, half PhD really. He's such a clever boy. You have to make the walk really interesting. Really interesting. Otherwise he just gets bored. So today we've been walking on Waterhall, which used to be a golf course, and is now being rewilded. Zorro obviously is uh, just checking for sheep. There aren't any sheep in here, so it's safe to let him off. He's pretty good around sheep. He's got pretty good rebel. There's some um, patch of windmill in the distance. So Zorro. waiting for me to stop filming and then he'll go for a big run so let's see it's lovely to see him run because he's very serious about it so. ready steady such a good boy Come on then. Very obedient dog. What a lovely, gorgeous pooch. There we are. How about that? So, yeah, sorry about the wind noise. Couldn't do anything about that. But um, it was much nicer to be able to hear Bonnie than just shove some uh, random music on it. So lovely to see it have another Zorro. If you've got a Zorro at home that you haven't told us about, do let us know. And we will feature Zorros all this month. <laughs> all April. This is a special Zorro month. Um, so that would be nice. Um, now, we have another quiz before we go. We, before we go, I must get this in. Andrew Norris, who also has a Zorro, also has a flower quiz. So this is a uh, big bag of flour. No, don't be silly. I'm not being silly. I would never be silly. I'm a very serious person. No, you silly. So, Andrew Norris, I hope you're still out there, Andrew, because you've got to give the answers, because you didn't give me the answers to what these flowers are. There's only four, but they are all in Croatia at the moment. So here is numero one. Numero okay. uno. Can anyone guess what that is? Hmm. Um, is it... Uh, really tiny flowers, aren't they? Yeah. Really tiny yellow flowers. It's kind of like a cowslip, but it's not a cowslip. No, no, no. They're much, much is smaller Is it a dog flowers. slip, maybe? <laughs> or um, a cat... Is cat's... it a mouse slip? Yeah, mouse slip. I don't maybe know. it's an ant slip. Um, 
Uh, and Andrew sent some seeds over. I planted the seeds that Andrew sent in my front garden, but I've no idea when they're supposed to be coming yeah. up. Graham Cass says salvia. Golden Sean, rattle. Sean That's James Cameron says golden rattle. Um, Linda Kane says archangel. Now, did I pronounce that correctly? <laughs> Probably not. A yellow orchid says Dean M. Cooper. Ah, could Elaine be, Whitelock yeah. says golden rod. Clover. Is Andrew Norris there? Andrew Norris. Oh, yeah, the other one. Yeah, he is out there. He's waiting for a cue to... Uh, oh, golden... Yellow raffle, he meant. Oh, here we go. I raffle. gave you the answers, Richard, but can give them... Here. Yeah, give them there because I have no idea where, oh, yeah, where okay. the answers are. Uh, so, yes, do tell us what it is. Is it, uh, is it yellow rattle? doesn't look like yellow rattle. I don't know what yellow rattle I don't know. No. Like. Well, I've had um, yellow rattle in a, in a thing which got an actual rattle to Ladies it. Ladies' bed straw. There's another different, oh, right. different name. So, Andrew, do tell us what it is. Bum, we, bada, bum, 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 we're just bum. waiting for Andrew to hear the message. There we go. It's crosswalk. What what word? Like, what, um, what? like the puzzle. So uh, here is the second oh, one of the color. four. That's got to be some form of orchid, hasn't it? Yes, I know. I keep saying, oh, that looks like a bit, it looks a bit, oh my gosh, I need to put my teeth in. That looks a bit like an orchid. And actually, this one really does look a bit like a tiny orchid. Is it, um, Carrie says, bugle, is it a bugle? Salvia. Bugle, um, what's name glass? What, what was that one that we used to find? Oh, B oh, bugle oh, something glass. Bug gloss. Bug gloss. Oh, yeah, bug gloss. Something bug gloss. But, that, but yeah. I think this is a per... Slipper orchid, says Station Master's Choice. Yeah, it's got to be Stilton an orchid. says David Vad. A blue fox glove, says um, Dean. And Dean. the answer is... is Andrew Norris. The answer is... Coming up shortly. Mark's oh, beautiful... Oh, bugle. Well done, Kerry. Mark's beautiful landscape says the picture is beautiful, isn't it, Richard? Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful isn't, isn't it? it? Oh, beautiful. I love you, Mark. <laughs> and uh, what one is this? Hmm. That's got to be an orchid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's not an orchid. It's an awkward. Uh, but it's a si awkward. similar formation to the Vipers calcium. bugloss. Oh, look, there we are. Look, Vipers, oh, yeah, Vipers bugloss. bugloss. Yeah, bugloss we gave them a true. clue then, didn't we? Bugloss, bugloss. Lord Jeffrey whatever. says it's two ninety nine down at B&Q. <laughs> Marvellous. Thank you. Very nice. Comfrey. Is that comfrey? Very comfrey. Uh, Alconet. Alconet. Alchemy. Acura ankle. Oh. Acurist. <laughs> is it uh, Timex? Pulmonaris lungwort. See, look, everyone's Sage got Derby. lots of different. Comfrey, Another we've comfrey. had a couple of comfreys. Is it comfrey? If you sit on it, it's quite comfrey. Fushi. Fushi. Nice. Yeah, good, good choice. And the answer is... Lungwort. Lungwort. There we go. Why do Marvelous. I keep saying it like that? I don't know. And the this is a orchid. Oh, that is so pretty. I think that's a golden yellow orchid, <laughs> isn't it? Mm. Um, what is that? Is that comfrey? Is it Serge Darby? Uh, people are just picking up their books. Pulmonaria. Is it? Is it? Comes four. Pullman's um, coach. Pulmonaria. Another one for that. Uh, is it a plant? Is it a man? Is it Superman? <laughs> it shoots its seeds. Uh, it never heard of that, says Tammy. Hello, Tammy, by the way. Purple Hello. orchid. Yes, it's got to be a purple. Early purple orchid, late purple one. What mm. colour would you say it if is? If it was a late purple orchid. Green. Bad joke. It's got a green stark, stalk. Stark. And the answer is... A daffodil. No, I don't <laughs> think it's a daffodil. Uh, that's a bit of graphic, isn't it, Dean? Um, waiting for Andrew Norris. Here it comes. I think this is the last one. Nope. Andrew, uh, early it? purple orchid. Yay. Bravo, Nicola and Ben. How about that's actually that? Rachel on Nicola's. Um, uh, oh yes, that's Rachel rightly. on Nicola's uh, account. That's it. Superb, lovely and flowers, both. and they're all available in um, Andrew's garden. <laughs> what? But in the whole of Croatia. In, in his, well, they're. I think they're all in his garden. He said. I mean, if I remember Actually, rightly, anyone. I can't remember because he sent it on WhatsApp. That's right. And I had to. Oh, trans I see. Yes, you had to transfer. I had to transfer it to an email, which is why I couldn't give you the answers because uh, they weren't on that phone. They were on the the other phone, which is charging in the other room. Yeah. So there we are. Anyway, that's it. Hundred and seven people watching. And ah ah. ah. <laughs> 
Oh, my God. Have to do old... it while you're looking at that screen so you can't see me doing it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Wait Till Your Father Gets Home was a cartoon in 1972, thanks to uh, Sean James Cameron uh, for sending that in. And I'm uh, just trying to show you a picture of it just so that we can... Where is the word pictures? In Andrew's meadow, by the way, rather than his garden. Oh, in his meadow. This was, I'd love to have a meadow. This was... Uh, Wait Till Your Father Gets Home, a cartoon. I don't know if people remember that. It's in small uh, letters, which was good. And uh, just before we go, was there something else in the email box that came in? He's having a quick look. Um, Jackie and uh, Miles are watching. They say, we're watching. Hi, Rich and Julia. Thank you for the curtains. Just to let you know, we're watching the Vogue show tonight, as we do every Monday, Friday and Wednesday. We watch it on YouTube, but on our TV, so don't sign in, so you don't see our names. But we are here. Thank you very much. Lovely lady. And they've invited me to lunch, or to a cup of tea or something, uh, to a cake. Or a thimble full of wine. I'm not quite sure what it was now. But very nice. They came to my door and they said, here's some wonderful curtains. And they said, if you're very careful, you can take the gold gilt off and you can take it down the pawnbrokers and make a mint. <laughs> and uh, so I said, oh, that's nice. Thank you very much. No, lovely people. Um, so I'm glad you're watching. Thank you for that. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for tonight. Julia, it's been absolutely lovely having you on the show, of it's course. It's been great to be on the show. Can I attempt to show this briefly? Yes, of course. Well, like I said earlier, I had the lovely Mary Hammond and her lovely husband, Phil, pop in uh, to my garden the other day to deliver a commission that I, ha I asked for. Mary Hammond of the, the, the lovely jumper fame. Yes, she's an internationally... Um, she used to knit for Harrods. Can to, you believe it? Yeah, she used to knit for Harrods. I had her commission... Well, I commissioned a, uh, a knitwear, a piece of knitwear for one of my closest friends and absolutely stunned. Do you want to show it on the... Um, on the, 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 uh, the What's the name? On, the, the, on the, the little one. Oh, yeah, that if might you show work it on better. there, because I think that might work out if I can work out how to get the webcam. There we go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's neon pink and neon green with black. It doesn't actually look as good. It doesn't look that. as great. No, no it doesn't, because no. you can't see like you should, uh, I have to email it to me or something, and yeah. I can show it, Anyways, shove it on the thing. I just thing. wanted to show it off because it's awesome, and she's absolutely delighted with is it. Is she oh. delighted? She is. Oh, fantastic. She's absolutely everywhere There we go. It. She says Mary feels, Hammond feels is like amazing. She a hug when she wears it, she says. Mary Hammond, you are amazing. And I can't email, email it in at the minute because <laughs> I haven't got my emails. I've got... I had to get a new second hand um, phone. Yeah. That was the word. Handset. Yeah, but it's very nice. Horsey camera. Horsey camera? For the camera. Oh, for the camera. And, and um, the, the oh, rest yeah, of the it was crumbling. Was, was, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it that's knackered. it for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us on this. Uh, I hope you'll join us on Wednesday. There is a video, of course, on the Board Explorer tomorrow. Uh, for you to enjoy uh, or endure, one of the three. It's my daughter's birthday today. Georgie is 28. Well, to be 28. 28? <laughs> Happy birthday, Georgie. That makes me feel so old. She's probably anyway. not watching, but anyway. She's not watching, no. She's no. got better things. She's got the new man in her life yeah. with a beard. What is it about beards? Why are women attracted to men with beards? Don't know. Anyway, each to their own. Each to their own beard. That's what we say. Uh, Bernie's got lots of beards, um, mm. and he keeps them in a small cage. <laughs> but thank you, Bernie, for your video. Thank you to Sean James Cameron for his. Thank you to Sean Ford for his. Uh, to Bonnie for the Zorro video and the quiz, and to uh, the Zorro owner Andrew Norris for the quiz of his with lots of purple sprouting broccoli uh, to Ian Dance for his pictures to uh, Bonnie for the flag I said that and Andrew Norris for that and Paul Rampton for the pot for the lovely piss pot which was nice um, and of course for the chocolates that we've been mm. munching and what we haven't mentioned mm. in the show you may have noticed in the background a magic lamp little mood lamp yes but we'll tell you about that on another occasion yes. um that's thank you to the phone calls the people who rang in using the telephone and anybody who spoke to us telepathically telepathically uh, thank you and to you uh, out there typing and the lovely judith who has been managing to get rid of the unwanted yes. comments like leonard smith says well done judith you earned your corn tonight yes <laughs> we very much appreciate judith. um all the help that everybody gives and all the support that you give us 
we wouldn't be able to do all this nonsense without you yeah. and try and keep you entertained through these terrible, terrible times. Long may they last. Yeah. And uh, what did you say? Um, what? Long may they last. <laughs> the longer that you're de dependent on us, the better it is. <laughs> I think that's the government talking in me now. Mm. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. We will be back at some point in your life to annoy you. But until then... And earn more dislikes. And earn more dislikes. <laughs> so don't forget to give us a thumbs across. No a thumbs up, no thumbs down. Just a thumbs. Mm, yeah, it was all right. Uh, one of those. And we will say arrivederci. Arrivederci. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Ah. <sighs>